Sri M. Sri Bharat. Sri Sri Bharat, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is my first speech in the parliament. I've heard uh, many learned members speak today, and uh, I hasn't, I'm not as prepared for countering many of the things that were said, but I think as we speak in the future, I'll learn from it. But I think the takeaway is that politics are different, times change, and when we point fingers at someone, there's four fingers pointing back at us. And uh, I think I'll speak about those as we proceed into the future. I'd like to start off by thanking the Honorable Prime Minister and the Finance Minister for their visionary budget, uh, which exemplifies the government's unwavering commitment to Vixit Bharat and the goal of making India a $30 trillion economy by 2047, and also making it the third largest economy by 2027. There were things that were said by uh, members of the opposition, I'd like to highlight some of them, that uh, the government today is not a stable government. I'd like to remind everyone that when UPA 2 came into power in 2009, the UPA didn't get the magic numbers. They were under 273, and they had to take external support of other parties to form the government. Compared to the times then and parties over here that were part of that alliance, we are much stronger now than they were then. I'd like to also uh, highlight that what we're doing now is alli the alliance is based on pre-election agreement between the political parties. And we've all come together based on the needs of our respective states. And I'll come back to why Andhra Pradesh needs help and what the challenges we've faced over the last five years. But I'd like to highlight certain aspects of the budget, I think, which will help us become uh, Viksit Bharat uh, by 2047. I'd like to start off with the, the focus on uh, infrastructure, on capital expenditure. The 11.11 crores that have been committed to capital expenditure is about 12% greater than what was committed last, uh, last year. And I'd also like to appreciate the 1.5 lakh uh, crores that have been given interest-free uh, for multiple states across the country to leverage uh, to build their own infrastructure. I'd like to also uh, uh, acknowledge the uh, budget given for rural Bharat through the allo allocation of 2.66 lakh crores. I'd like to in particular uh, appreciate the government for recognizing the challenges of the MSME sector by basically providing end-to-end -end support from the new credit assessment for giving about 100 crores of loan without collateral, from giving support to stressed MSMEs during their times of difficulty, uh, to giving them access to funds. I think uh, the MSMEs are the backbone of the country because across rural and urban areas, there's millions of MSMEs across the country that need that help. But through this development, we are not leaving people behind because there are allegations of price rise and inflation. I'd like to remind here that the average inflation in the NDA government over the last 10 years has been about 5% as, as per the world economic outlook. But during the UPA regime of 4 to 14, the inflation was 7.5%. So there's a 2.5% average lower number of inflation in the last 10 years compared to the UPA regime from 4 to 14. So whatever complaints that the opposition has about price rise, I think they're pointing a lot more fingers at themselves. I think the uh, commitment of the government to give uh, budget support to one crore families for building housing, both in urban and rural areas, is much appreciated, and we look forward to getting that benefit in Andhra Pradesh also. I think the continued welfare support uh, through the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana to 80 crore people and continuing that for five more years, we appreciate that. And uh, I'd like to specifically mention uh, the water management that the city of Vishakhapatnam that I represent is covered in that. Having told the entire parliament uh, during the campaign and also having contested in 2019, this is an acute shortage and acute challenge uh, that we face in our city with sewage and solid waste treatment issues. I'd, I'd, I'd like to also highlight uh, the solar plan of providing about one crore houses with solar rooftops and about 300 units of electricity free. So I think through this, the government is providing development and providing support to not only the wealthy but also to the poor and to people all around the country. And I hope that as the country keeps moving forward, we support many others. We've given a basic standard of living uh, through these various initiatives. We've focused on infrastructure, we've focused on economic growth. But then the question is about equity. How are we giving opportunity to different people around the country? There are different things that the budget has spoken about. Uh, one uh, which was very interesting was 
about being able to provide internship opportunities to one crore youth uh, across the country to start with in the 500 top uh, companies, but I hope that it gets spread to other companies. And the budget outlay in terms of giving a one-time joining of 6,000 rupees and a monthly benefit of about 5,000 rupees. I'd like to appreciate the intention to set up 1,000 ITIs in the hub and spoke model across the country and to train 20 lakh youth uh, in skilling. I think it's a much needed initiative. Uh, being a, a person who is in higher education myself, I'd like to in particular appreciate the intention to give loan support of about 10 lakh rupees to every student who wants to pursue higher education in domestic institutions and also giving 3% subvention on interest. Uh, because I did my undergrad in the US, I lead a university in India today with about 30,000 students. I've seen over the last two decades that increasingly the number of assets that one holds is going down. Most people have to take debt to educate their children. And today, um, I don't want India to go into a place where the United States is right now, which is rising debt trap in the student community. And I think if you see the major expenditure that any household incurs is on education and on healthcare. So this uh, important scheme coming in the higher education is much appreciated. And I also would like to uh, briefly mention some uh, initiatives in the Atmanirbhar Bharat uh, intentionality, which is about making ourselves uh, uh, self-sufficient on the semiconductors uh, and the entire uh, technology uh, sector because of the challenges we've seen in the pandemic and in general in the global uncertainty. I think all of the production link incentives we've given in the technology, IT, automobiles, uh, are all very necessary to also provide opportunities uh, for Indian citizens for pursuing manufacturing in India. As we do all this, I think there's two di potentially disruptive forces that we have to watch out for. And I'd I'm happy to see that certain initiatives uh, in those areas have been announced. The first disruptive uh, force that could really change the way we live is climate change, sustainability. Uh, because while we may be ignorant to the incremental damage to the environment, we're all seeing the way cyclones and hurricanes and storms and earthquakes are happening around the world. Uh, so investments into that area is like uh, bringing clean energy, uh, doubling the budget from 10,000 crores to close to 20,000 crores on new and renewable energy, uh, almost increasing the nuclear power investments uh, by 400% from about 500 to 2,000 crores, and uh, increasing the solar grid capacity and looking at the overall renewable energy capacity, in 2014, we were 76 gigawatts. Now we have come to close to 200 gigawatts. So the government is delivering on its uh, stated intention, and I think it will keep doing so over the next five years. I'd like to also specifically mention, while it's a small investment into the space, the VC fund that has been set up for 1,000 crores, I think, is very important because as we exhaust our uh, natural resources and as we look at uh, beyond the Earth. I think investing into space startups and potentially living on other planets down the line will not be uh, an impossibility, and it will be a possibility. And I'm glad that India is joining that. So uh, having seen this, I'd like to also highlight the po second uh, potentially disruptive and also uh, potentially very dangerous thing if we don't manage it well is artificial intelligence. The government of India approved uh, the India AI mission in uh, March 2024 with a budget outlay of about 10,000 crores over the next five years. Uh, I'd like to request that we put specific focus and research on uh, the impact on the labor markets through the advancement of I uh, AI, the regulations we need to put in place to ensure that AI doesn't overtake uh, the way our labor market functions, uh, and also to invest into research on how we skill our workforce to deal with AI in the future. As far as the state uh, of Andhra Pradesh is concerned that I represent uh, in the parliament of Vishakhapatnam, I'd like to specifically appreciate uh, uh, the Honorable Finance Minister Nirmal Sitaraman ji and our Prime Minister Modi ji uh, for the support of 15,000 crores that's been announced for Amravati in the current financial year and the commitment to allocate more in the coming years because Amravati is a project that's very historic and unique. We've received about 33,000 acres from over 30,000 farmers without taking a single rupee up front with the trust that we will develop and give back a world-class capital but due to the damage of the last five years and the previous government, we've lost that ability to do it. So we need the support of the center, and we appreciate the uh, center's response to that. Also, we'd like to uh, appreciate the government's stance on Polavaram and saying that it's not just uh, the lifeline for Andhra Pradesh, but a lifeline for the country because it can provide food security for the entire country. And really appreciate the government's commitment to financing and ensuring the early completion of Polavaram irrigation project in the state of Andhra Pradesh.
As far as industrial development and infrastructure goes, there was uh, mention of the Kopati node, the Orvakal node in the Vishakhapatnam Chennai Industrial Corridor and the Hyderabad Bangalore Industrial Corridor. We'd like to work closely with the central government in ensuring that these are a reality in the very near future. We'd like to appreciate the grants for the backward regions, Rail Sima, Prakasham, and North Coastal Andhra, which I represent, uh, getting the grants uh, continuously over the next five years. And we look forward to overall getting all aspects of the AP Reorganization Act being implemented in letter and spirit, and we appreciate the finance minister for that support. Uh, I'd like to also specifically mention something um, that was mentioned in the beginning of the finance, uh, uh, the budget speech, and somewhere in the middle, which is about the seafood exports. Uh, Andhra Pradesh now exports close to 40% of the seafood uh, in India out of the $8 billion industry. And uh, there are significant challenges in terms of what the farmers face in terms of access to the shrimp brood stocks. So the two things that were mentioned was, one, uh, starting a breeding center for shrimp brood stocks in the country will really mitigate the production volatility and provide the livelihood stability for thousands of aqua farmers in our state, and also providing NABAT financing for not just the shrimp farmers, but for the processors and for the exporters. So we thank, uh, thank the government for that support. And I'd like to highlight here to all members of the House, uh, why does Andhra need this support? The state was divided in 2014. I'd like to remind everybody in the House, the division, uh, according to us, was done uh, unscientifically. And uh, for the first time in 2014, Andhra Pradesh had a deficit budget after eight years of continuous positive budgets. And even the revenue distribution that was done was not done fairly. It was unequal. And these are multiple challenges. After the NDA government came to power in 2014, and our leader, Mr. Chandrabhav Naidu, was the chief minister, we systematically worked on developing the economy. We competed with Telangana in the development of our per capita income. And on multiple metrics, we were doing well. Our agriculture grew, our economy grew at a faster rate than the country. But in 19, when we lost the elections, the damage that has been done to the state in the last five years, uh, it, uh, to some eyes, uh, it feels that we've gone back by 15, 20 years. For a state that historically has received only about 40, 45 paisa for every rupee it gives to the center, we're in a very unique position today where we need to depend on the center to be able to run our state. And that's the particular reason why we even went to elections together with the BJP, with the Janshena, with Modi ji, and with Pankalyan ji for uh, the good of the state. What are the challenges we faced? Amravati was not just not developed, it was systematically tried to be killed and destroyed. We've seen the farmers in Andhra Pradesh protest for over uh, 1,200 days, close to 1,500 days, protesting against the earlier uh, dictatorial regime in Andhra Pradesh. The, Progress of Polovaram, well, it achieved about 72% by the end of 2019 government. In the last five years, I'm very sad to say that it's only progressed about 3%. And under the claims of saving money or reverse tendering, they've damaged so many aspects of the Polovaram that now we have an international committee coming and checking it out and seeing what damage has been done and how we can repair it for the future. I'm also very sad that Andhra Pradesh that was thriving had the highest unemployment rate among graduate youth in India at about 24% uh, in the year 2022-23. We seek to really reverse that. And overall, um, we still haven't uh, released our white note on finances for the state. I think we will do that shortly, maybe today or tomorrow. But the state's debt is estimated to have reached about 13 lakh crores in many forms. Debt on the state, debt through corporations, many of which we don't know, debt through liabilities that have to be paid, debt through incentives that uh, have to be paid. When we club all of this together, it's about 13 and a half lakh crores. When we left office in 2019, the state debt was about three lakh crores, three and a half lakh crores. In a period of five years, we've seen the debt go up by 10 lakh crores, and that's really crippled us in our, and our ability to invest into our own future. And the, the, the off-products of that are many other failures. One such thing I'd like to highlight is the, uh, the failure in the way that we've managed our power sector and leading to a loss of over 1.2 lakh crores in the power sector alone. I can keep going on and on, but I think the people of Andhra Pradesh have recognized these failures in governance. And when we came together, uh, the BJP, Janasena, and TDP, and we went to the people that we need to beat this dictatorial regime, they have given us a historical mandate of 164 seats out of 175 seats. We've won 21 seats in the NDA. I'd like to remind, uh, remind members of the opposition that we've gone together. It's not that BJP has three MPs in uh, Andhra Pradesh, but the NDA has 21 MPs in Andhra Pradesh, and that is a very strong part of the government today. Um, and uh, we'd like to continue to seek central support over the next few years, uh, because uh, we'd like Andhra to come back onto its uh, feet. 
as was said before, strong states make for strong countries, and competitive federalism is very good for all states to compete in a very positive manner. So we would like to continue to do that, but we seek that help in the short term so that Andhra can get back onto its feet. We're very confident that under visionary leadership on, uh, of our leader, Chandrababu Naiduji, we, were, we had difficulties in 1995 when we came into power, when he became chief minister. We had difficulties in 2014 when we came into power. But we've never seen difficulties like this, what we have now in 2024. In fact, just yesterday, our chief minister speaking in the House at the Legislative Assembly was saying that I can't even announce the budget of the state because that's how bad things are. I need two months' time to study how bad things are before I can even announce a budget for the state. Uh, so we're very sad as members of parliament representing our state to see a prospering state in this condition. But regardless, innovation is uh, uh, going about uh, unabated. Uh, similar to the skilling uh, commitment of the central government, Andhra Pradesh has taken on uh, this uh, very innovative decision to do a skill census to measure the requirement of skills and the availability of skills in all districts of Andhra Pradesh and use that information as a basis for skill development, as a basis for employment, as a basis for investment into the state of Andhra Pradesh, and we will continue to do so. There are many other things uh, that I'd like to speak, uh, but the, I'll just end with a few things and coming back to a few things concerning uh, my parliament, Vishakhapatnam. Uh, the government has uh, recently announced the intention to overall 200 state-run firms and shift the focus away from privatization and towards enhancing intrinsic value. I request the Honorable Finance Minister to include the Vizag steel plant among these state enterprises, and we will provide all our support from the state government to bring it back out on its feet and really deliver on uh, providing steel to the country. Uh, we'd like to continue to coordinate with the government on the speedy establishment of the South Coast Railway Zone, and I look forward to whatever budgetary allocation that is required for that. And uh, this gracious allocation, I would like to end my speech by saying that this gracious allocation for a state like Andhra Pradesh is very well received by the people of Andhra Pradesh, especially in the despair that we've been in the last five years. We'd like to acknowledge uh, our Prime Minister, uh, uh, Narendra Modi ji, and uh, our Finance Minister, Nirmala Sitaraman ji, for recognizing this need and respecting the judgment of uh, the people of Andhra Pradesh. And uh, I look forward to uh, participating more in this August House in further debates. And I thank the Honorable Chairman for the time given to me to speak today. Thank you. Thank you. Dinesh Chandra Yadav.